Today I'm going to build this free Final Cut Pro plugin for you and it's called Long Shadow. Now, if all you want to do is download the plugin and use it, then please think about subscribing to our channel and maybe liking this video. It'll help you know when we release new plugins. There are a few tutorials out there about making a long shadow for Final Cut Pro already, but they didn't really do what I wanted. Um, one was using the replicator, which to me is a bit clumsy and ties up the processing power of Final Cut Pro and Motion. We won't be doing that. Another was by twisting the item 90 degrees, applying a stretch to the alpha and then twisting it back. Really clever. Tried it. Didn't really work. Not what I'm after. Won't be doing that either. So the obvious solution is to use the extrude filter. So is the extrude filter going to help us or not? That's the question. Right. OK, let's take a look. Now, I'm in motion here. I've opened up just a normal title preset. Um, it's 1080, 1920 by 1080. Doesn't really matter. Um, but as you'll see, I normally get this title background in the text. I'm going to delete that there. I'm going to leave the title background on just the moment, but I will end up turning it off. OK, right. So let's make another group. And within that group, I'm going to put some text. So just click on there and I'll call it long shadow and then adjust the text. So it's actually in the center. So click on there and then we'll go to the properties center that and then by the looks of it let's make that just a bit bigger let's go up to those grid the grids are really handy by the way i use them all the time on that long shadow there we go all right that looks good um we call this maybe original text got that right now you would think the thing to do is to go to the library find the filters and we'll tap in the bottom here Ex extrude and we'll drop the extrude onto the text and we've got a nice long shadow. Well, kind of. First of all, it, it dies off with a bit of a gradient and it's not big. It's not big enough. You know, I want to go off screen. Now, if I push this up to the top left, you know, it's just not going to work. It's going to conk out halfway down the screen. So, OK, let's just undo, undo that. Also, I want to change the colour. So let's go shading and we'll go we'll put the back brightness to one. And we'll put the front brightness to one as well. And now we've got a nice solid long shadow, although we want it to be longer. OK, so how are we going to manage that? What I'm going to do is I'm going to actually make a clone and put the extrude filter onto the clone. So OK, okay. new group. I'm going to call this text clone. Clone. And we're going to drop that down underneath underneath but not in there we go drop that underneath the original text now i'm going to make a clone of that but without the extrude filter on take the extrude filter off make a clone and drop that into the text clone okay now i'm going to apply the filter to that library extrude onto the group and again we've got this long shadow but it still doesn't go any further than 500 and you can blow it up do whatever you want it's still going to be that size uh, when you come to drop the extrude filter on okay i do need to change that to be the same as we had before so if we look at filters and go one and one there we go nice drop shadow now, to extend that, we're going to do something really, really simple. We're just going to duplicate it. OK, so we've got extrude. Let's call that two and call that one. So we've got a nice long shadow, but it's still not long enough. I want it longer. So let's go and duplicate that again. And we'll call that extrude three. Now, the problem I have is that if I move the OSC, the on-screen control, we get this horrible effect where it's extruding one angle and extruding it the other. So I don't want to do that. So what I want to do is I want to link the angles together. So it's no problem. Go to the library, behaviors. Take that off and we're going to go parameter, link. And I'm going to drop that on the 
there. Turn it on into the inspector and we're going to go filters where I wanted to go is extrude to angle and then the actual original is going to come from the text clone filters extrude one angle. Okay so hopefully that's put the angle of one and two together and as you guessed it I'm going to make another duplicate and that's link copy and that's going to go from extrude angle one to filters extrude angle three. Okay, let's see if we can do this now. So if I move everything up and go to extrude one that's got the OSC, I now have a super long shadow. Great. Okay, one thing I'm going to do as well on the extrude, I'm going to publish the OSC, toggle that on, and then I'll publish that as well. Okay, that looks good. Now, obviously, because this is um, um, the same color, it's taking the, the extrude filter is taking the color from the color of the font. So if I go to long shadow, go text and go appearance and just pick a color, the whole thing goes one color, which I don't want. So I'm going to keep that white just for the moment, but I'm going to put a background in. So it's a new group, drag that down to underneath the text. And then I'm going to put a color solid in off to the library. And we're going to go generators color solid. It should be blue. Yes, it's default setting on there. Okay, that's fine. But I need to do a mask. Okay, so go to group one, which is let's call this um, drop sh long shadow generator. On there, I'm going to add an image mask and then drop the text clone into the image mask. And hopefully that's going to work. And it does look at that. And just to prove it, I can go to the text, move that around and go to the extrude one for the OSC. And here we've got that. And we're almost there. Put that back in the center. Right. A few things to publish. Let's publish the color of the solid. So I'm going to go publish project. And this is going to be long shadow color or shadow color. Maybe we use the English spelling on there. Then we've got, I really don't know why I published the OSC. I thought that was going to be the XY. So we don't really need that. Let's just turn that off. We've got that. We've got the text, which I'm going to publish as well what I'm going to do although this will appear in the um, in the tab in Final Cut Pro I'm going to publish a few bits and pieces anyway so I'm going to publish the entry publish I'm going to publish the um, font and the size so when we look at that that's fine I'll drop the shadow color down there I like that now I want to publish that opacity and that opacity is the opacity of the color solid, which is quite easy to publish. Publish that, publish. Let's just check it works first. Yeah, very nice. So that is shadow opacity. I tapped opacity in twice for some reason. Now, what about the length? How do I control the length of that? At the moment, it's the longest it is. So it's on extrude. So if I look at that, it's kind of like 497, 497, or just about the longest you can get. Right. I'm going to do a rig and I'll make a slider. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add to rig, create new rig, create new slider. Go to extrude two. And I'm going to do the same on that. Add to rig, add to rig, rig slider and extrude three extrude three and that's distance and to rig rig and to slider as you can see here this little gear means that that's controlled with the link behavior on both of those you can see it's 306 306 306 on there um, maybe i'll tap that in put 300 save it as 300 i like nice round numbers on there so going back to the slider we know the maximum is 500 let's tap that in we can push these all up to 500, or we could do, I'm going to have to tap it in, just tab between the entries, and that needs to be right up at the top. 
I can five hundred. Five hundred. Five hundred on there. And then down to zero. And this is where we hopefully should see this long shadow disappear. I pull this all down. And as you can see, that's going. And now I've got a slider that controls the length of the shadow, which is super funky. So I'll publish that project. And I'm going to call that shadow length on there. Save that. We're going to call it on shadow, shadow, shadow. And we're going to drop it in XFX free as you'd expect because it's a free plugin for Final Cut Pro and publish. And I always hit it twice. Save. And there we go. We have published that plugin to Final Cut Pro. So let's go and have a look at it in Final Cut Pro. So here we are in Final Cut Pro. I've got a gradient on the background, which is quite nice. And as you can see, I've got the XFX Long Shadow Free Effect in there. And that's under XFX Free. Just drag that on. And we have that lovely long shadow. Now, a couple of things. I did tidy it up. I corrected the spelling mistakes, of course. And I also took the background off, which is really important because I can actually move this around um, as the whole thing. If you look and it won't affect the, the grad at the background. Um, I can obviously click on this and move this around. I've got the on-screen control. And if we look in the inspector, I've got the controls that I published. Um, so I can vary the size. It's all really nice and do whatever font I want. That was really quite nice as well. Change that to maybe something like a gray would be nice. Uh, go to the sliders, maybe a bit darker gray but maybe not black. For that, we've got the opacity. So as you can see, you can get some really nice effects. Also, you can animate the length by doing a keyframe. And just to prove that, let's put the shadow length down to zero and put a keyframe in there and then push it down a bit and put the shadow length to its maximum. And hopefully we should have a lovely extruding long shadow there. So that's a free plugin, XFX Long Shadow. I hope you enjoy it. Lots of stuff coming in the future. We've got some new plugins, we've got some new free plugins and some tutorials. So why not give us a like and subscribe? And if you hit the bell, you'll get a notification when we release something new. Hope you come back soon. Bye bye.